something, a particular sound, you want to do the feature bass sound or the house sound or whatever, in the process of doing that, you might stumble on your own sound. And oftentimes we won't know when we do it. Um, we won't know when we catch that thing that's magical about us. So have your friends around and put those songs out and be surprised when the universe tells you that you're doing something magical that to you sounded like a mess up or an accident. Always keep your heart open to it and your mind open to your mistakes, okay? There is no equation for people and the music that they will like. Now, as you, as you keep making songs, and this has happened to me before, uh, I've, I've seen other artists get big, and I don't really understand why. And you might look at a guy who gets maybe two or three million views on SoundCloud, he gets two plays on SoundCloud, and you might go, what the fuck? How, how did this Joe start? This guy sucks. And he's getting all these, all these plays, but my songs aren't getting any play. Don't ever worry about other people and, and their success. There is a market for everybody. The only way that you will connect with anybody is when the conversation with yourself about who you are starts to develop. And once you establish that, that story that you're telling your fans will come to you. They will find you. It just so happens that as human beings, we don't get along with everybody. And similarly, there's going to be a group of people out there who really like this guy who just popped up whose music sucks to you. But that's because he's at least doing something that's honest. And anytime you do something honest, you're going to find that there's people out there who become your fans. The only way you don't get any fans is if you never do anything honest. But if you're honest, and you're honest about how much you like to rub mint leaves on your feet or something, you'll at least find that there's a, another weird group of people out there who likes just the same thing, right? They're going to show up as long as you're doing something that's honest. So don't worry about other artists and their success. Focus on figuring out who you are, and the fans will show up. Style and confidence. So a lot of what I talked about of trying to emulate other people it's a confidence thing. At first, especially for me early on, I was always trying to copy other people. It was the most important thing to me that I could just be as good of a producer as Hardwell or as Dr. Dre, because I was more into hip hop when I first started. It was always more important to me to just sound like those guys. But through all the little things that you do, through all the hours that you spend, all the little things that you pick up, all the mistakes that you make, all of those things, the million little things that you pick up, they turn into you, your style. So when people sit around or they, or they think oh, they think and they think and they overthink about what their style is supposed to be, what their personality is supposed to be, just know that it comes. It, it came to me over, how long have I been doing music? 10 years maybe before I started Cashmere. It's a long time, long time. It's all the little things that add up and create your personality. And now when I make people, uh, now when I make music, people say that I have like a distinct sound or I have a particular sound, but it's really just, I, I gotta say, it's almost like a million mess ups, a million little accidents and things that I picked up along the way. So don't worry so much about inventing what your style is tomorrow and how you're gonna start dressing because you're gonna be this new artist tomorrow and that's how your project is gonna get big. Just know, that's not human. It is not human to invent a new version of yourself. But what is human and what is lasting and what is meaningful is all the little things that you pick it up along the way. All the little, the different way that you do a kick drum, that you do a snare, that's gonna add up to your personality. You just have to let it come with time. Don't try to invent yourself overnight. It's very complex and it's very subtle. But as those things do add up, people start telling you that you have a sound. And that's gonna be the difference that makes you a great artist, so. Bear that in mind. Okay, when it comes to music theory, I'll try not to geek out too much and bore you guys with a lot of music theory stuff. But I will say that everything I learned, I learned online, I didn't learn in school. Uh, if you guys wanna write, if, you, if you're gonna write any one thing down today, I'd say it should probably be these two websites. And these two websites are Hook Theory and Courthouse. 
All I really learned were the scales and the chords. And then after you learn the scales and you learn the chords, you should go and learn how to steal chords from other great songs. You should steal them and then you should figure out why they worked. And a great way to steal chords, a great place that you could find chords from your favorite songs is this place called Hook Theory. And this place, Courthouse, is where you'll find all the scales and chords that you need. Okay? You guys got it? Alright. Don't be intimidated because all chords are really based on a simple triad. How many of you guys know what, what a triad is? Yeah? Okay, I'll show you just to refresh. So here I've made an A minor scale. This should be pretty familiar to you guys. What do you notice about the notes? All the notes are on the white keys. You can't really see, I don't know, can you, can you see? I don't know how well you can see. That first note there is an A. That's a B, that's a C, that's a D, that's an E, that's a... Thank you. Uh, that's a G, and then we come back here to an A. So really you have seven notes. You've just got seven notes in this scale. I don't, I don't say the A, because the A is just a repeat of the first note. So you got seven notes here. Those are the notes that you can play in a standard A minor scale. So what's a triad? Well, a triad is really just when you start putting notes on top of other notes. And it looks like this. What's, uh, what's the first chord? A minor, right? And then the second one that you got to be, it's one of the messed up ones. I, uh, yeah, that's a mess up. It's supposed to be a B diminished. Yeah, that chord sucks. Don't worry about that chord. Uh, the next chord is what? A C major, right? And then you've got a D minor. So basically what you've done here is you've created a triad. When I say a triad, it's real easy. It's three notes, right? They're each separated by one note in the scale. You can't hit that note, you can't hit the B, because it's not separated. You need to separate it by one. So that gives you the A, gives you the C, and it gives you the E. I'm sorry it's not more clear, but that, that basically makes sense to you guys, right? Triad. If you're not really familiar with triads, go, go learn them. They're really not that complicated. When people talk about music theory, it really just revolves around putting a few notes on top of each other. Let's just leave it at that, okay? So, the Roman numerals. The Roman numerals are gonna make it easy for me to talk to you about what I'm gonna to talk to you about. I think, as long as you can see something. I've lost my... Uh, How do you... Uh, essentials, uh, reach status essentials. There we go. Okay. So, I don't know. How does this look? Does this look pretty bad? Great. Well, you, or you can see the Roman numerals, right? Yeah? Okay. All right. So, this is one, that's an A, and the next up is a B, and that's a two. So easy, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And when you do the Roman numerals, you do a lowercase Roman numeral if it's a minor, and you do an uppercase Roman numeral if it's a major. I messed up, that should be a major, I'll fix that. Okay, so these, when you, when, you, when you go online and you're trying to learn a little bit of music theory, I'm trying to show you that it's really not that complicated. It really comes down to one scale that you're working on, and the A minor scale is what we picked because it's the easiest one, because it uses all the white keys. And you've just got your first note, your second note, your third note, your fourth note, etc., as can be played by only using the white keys because you're in the A minor scale, all right? 
and you are given the following chords. You're given a minor chord for the first one, and you get the diminished, and then you get a major chord for the third, and so on and so forth. Just the chords that we looked over before, okay? And that looks like this, right? Same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So when somebody says, I'm gonna go from the one to the five to the six, and you're just like, your head is spinning, I don't know what this guy's talking about, it's really not that complicated. You just gotta remember what they are, all right? So, from there, I'll show you a few tricks. Yeah, understanding the major, relative, minor. Just so you know, A minor is the same as C major. Do you guys know that? Okay, all right. I'm just gonna go with the people who say yes. I like you guys. Make my life easier. Um, so why is B important? So the only reason that I bring up the music theory thing is not just to give you some big lecture on music theory. I leave that to somebody else. Uh, but, but one thing that I learned that is incredibly important is this thing called V. Now if we go back and we look at the chords that are available to us, here. What is V in the case of A minor? What is that chord? Yes, yeah, the E. It's the E, right? So, if you're looking at this, this is your A minor. Does that show up okay? Yeah, all right. So that's an A minor. You've got the power of the V, which I want to show you guys. The E is your V. That is because it is a five. One, two, three, four, five, right? And that is so powerful because it always wants to go back to the one. And here's what I'm talking about. Let's just make up a chord progression at random. Here we got an A. We'll go to a D. That's available. We'll go to the F. That's available. And finally, we're going to go to the E. But in this case, we're gonna make the E major. And this is a way that you can sort of cheat, you could think of it, in music theory. You can't use this note typically, because what? It's a black key. But because it's the V, the power of the V says it shall be that you can use it with incredible, incredibly satisfying results to always come back to your first chord. And that's because it is the five of your A minor. It will always come back here nicely. Okay. Should have looped that for emphasis. But you can cheat. And the way that you can cheat in music theory is by using the relationships um, of chords that lend themselves nicely to, to subsequent chords. And the most common one that you're gonna find is this thing called V. The fifth always leads back into the one. In this case here, I'll loop it so you can really hear it. I'm gonna add this up here. It will always, I wish I had a MIDI controller so I could show you guys, but because it is the fifth, it will always resolve back into the one. That is basically what I'm trying to uh, convey to you here. And it's an example of how you can cheat music theory in the sense that you can, you can sneak in notes that don't seem like they belong in the scale. The way that we've done it here is we took that note, which is the A flat, and it should have been a G, but because of the power of the fifth always leading back and resolving into a one, we we're able to sneak it in there. So that's an example of how you can cheat if you guys are used to regular minor or major scales. Another thing that I like to uh, explain to you guys, well, uh, this really takes more of a keyboard. I, have, I need a keyboard to show you. But I'll skip to the half step relationships and the full step relationship. So sometimes people ask me about are there certain notes or are there certain types of melodies that are hits? And I don't think that's yeah, it's not, you just, you couldn't say that any certain notes in a scale are made for hit melodies or not, but certainly the half-step relationships that are available to you are going to create a darker sound, whereas the full-step relationships that are available to you, they're going to create more of an uplifting sound. So if you go between these notes, for instance,
it's going to sound darker than this. And without a keyboard, I can't. Uh, shit. How can I show you this? Yeah, I could use I could use the. Uh, all right. Okay, I'll just mock something up real quick. Why not? You guys don't know where it'd be, right? Okay, you guys know that song? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll show you an example of how this could be more positive. Right? More more positive. Right? That sounds more like uh, like rattle. You know that song by the Bingo players? Okay. Anyway, not gonna make a fool of myself here. But what makes it darker? Okay, you've got this guy, and we put him down there, he's displaying for you the half-step relationship, right? We did we did two half-steps when we went up to there, or we did a whatever you call it, but this is a half-step, we can all agree on that, right? That is a minor feel. If you put it over here, also give you a minor feel. Sounds dark. But when you put it up here, you lose that, and you get something that sounds major and sounds happy, and it just doesn't sound as cool, to be honest with you. The other thing that we have is this. This is a minor relationship here. You see, this C up here, it's just sort of staying like an anchor. You notice how the C is almost there. It's just repeating on the top like the whole time, right? All the interesting stuff happens around the C. The C is the constant here. And then here you have the G sharp and you have the G. And the fact that you walk down from a G sharp to a G displays the minor character of your scale. And therefore it is darker and that's why you have this dark and very cool melody. And I won't show you the cheesy version, but you guys remember it didn't sound as cool, right? Okay, good. All right, we got that. Um, you don't have to start with the one chord, in our case, A minor. It is also useful to start on the, uh, the four chord, or you can start on the five chord. All right, so I'll show you guys the secrets chords. I'll quickly go through this, because I know this, uh, I don't know, you guys like the music theory stuff? The fun? Okay. All right. So, I said you don't have to start on the, uh, the one chord. So this is A minor. God, I hope you guys can see this shit. All right. Does that help? Does that help? Okay, all right. All right. Um, okay, so, God, see, this just looks crazy to me now. Uh, but, all right, I'll fold it if you guys want to fold it. Uh, shit. Damn. Does that look less confusing? Now I'm really confused, yeah, sorry. I love you, but thank you. All right, so we're in A minor here, but we're not gonna start on the A minor. We're gonna start